Now, I mean, we were talking yeah. about a very practical application right. of yoga where, where a teacher is working with a young person, mm. particularly in a young adult, mm. uh, adolescent, mm. who often doesn't want to be in school. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the stakes are very high uh, in keeping that person at school, mm -hmm. you know, from the government's perspective, often mm. from the parents, uh, from the local communities as well. I mean, mm. potentially very stressful for the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and we were exploring possibilities for yoga uh, through very practic practical applications of yoga in particular mm. to help that teacher work with that young person. Right. Yoga, first of all, the teacher has to be like in yoga, that w I mean, they have to be in, they've got to be centered in themselves. They've got to be in relationship as well, uh, ready to deal with stress, ready to deal with difficult situations, and ready to deal with other people. So yoga, first of all, means self-realization. Okay, I'm a conscious being. Now I come into this classroom, or I, I mean, in my case, or anywhere, a teaching situation. What am I dealing with? I'm dealing with other conscious beings who have exactly the same right to their existence and their knowledge and their search for happiness as I have. We have equal rights, actually. The, I mean, if we talk about educational system, where I grew up, teacher means, you know, the teacher's in charge and you just do what the teacher says. But that's not really an effective, very effective process. So yoga means that <coughs> you, you identify with that person as a person, see that they're they're also a conscious entity, they're on a you know, the conscious learning curve, and they're precious. And then we have to deal with them in that way. It means that we have to relate to them as a human being, start talking to them about their situation, establish rapport with them as human beings. Um, I mean, get information from them so that we understand where they're at, but also help them to sense that there's a heart-to-heart -heart connection, even if their behavior is difficult, but still there's a heart-to-heart -heart connection, still I value them, even if they irritate the heck out of me, but still I value them as a human being, and I take responsibility for our relationship, and try to introduce some more values into the situation so that they actually make a personal commitment to learning something, to contributing to the whole, I mean, the classroom situation. Uh, to contributing to the relationship with the, with the teacher. It's, it's an exercise really potentially in community building because the student potentially is a member of the same community as the teacher is going to be. And of course that's what the government has in stake. So those are some of the, consider I mean those are some of the immediate considerations. Uh, and it requires practice, it's not just an intellectual you can't just do it by an intellectual adjustment. It has to come from a uh, like realization by, by actual practice. First of all, practice oneself, yoga practice oneself, but also ongoing yoga practice in relationship situations so that those, that understanding, those attitudes and those skills get built in more and more and you can deal more and more in that way rather than a self-centered, ouch, I'm hurting, I'm out kind of response to the situation, which is the immediate response. In modern society, we're taught to enjoy, you know, have a good day, enjoy yourself. That was, that's like, the, you know, the greeting when you, or when you leave, right? So that's drilled into us, we have to enjoy ourselves. And the teacher's got that idea that I've got to enjoy myself. And the students also got the idea that I've got to enjoy myself. And that's, it's very inimical to, uh, that is like, mm, it's an obstacle, that attitude is an obstacle to setting up a, a, an effective, responsible relationship where not only you get a transfer of information, but also the teacher can transfer their enthusiasm for like effective living to the student so that the student can, like in that situation, but also through the years, they'll be guided. Then also, I mean, in the school that I grew up in, I was given no life skills at all, nothing about relationship nothing about the meaning and purpose of life. Uh, I remember at the end of my, very end of my college, when I was at university, we were having a, um, like a party at the end. So I had two, t two tutors, and one of them was supposed to be called the moral, he was called the moral tutor. So he said to me, uh, what's the most important thing you can get out of university? I said, well, oh, degree, I suppose. He said, no, no, no. You have to drink without getting drunk. 
So there's lots of people who are successful in the world. They don't have degrees. But if you can't take a drink, you'll no get nowhere. I thought, my God, you know, what, what's this education about? So we have to you know, give them life skills, how they can find out what their gifts and talents are, how they can be enthusiastic about being themselves. Um, it's a very broad responsibility. And the, you know, the educational system, whatever you call it, I mean, it, it's, that ha it has a very large responsibility, I think, for equipping people to live in the world rather than just feeding them, feeding them into the, the social system, which is what happened to me. So it means moving beyond the notion of teachers just being transmitters of content knowledge in their discipline areas, yeah. for example, which might be more like the factory model. Factory model. Yeah. Well, you can tell me. Do you think that do you think that model works? Absolutely not. Okay. And and I think most teachers would tell you that it's uh, well, most good teachers perhaps yeah. would tell you that it's a much more complicated um, process. The right. process of teaching okay. does involve relationships. Yeah. Uh, but but what about the notion of challenging teachers' understandings about what constitutes the system, and where they fit into that system? Um, often we talk about the system of education as being something which is out there. Uh, which has some sort of a physical being, um, yeah. but in reality it doesn't. Um, and the system happens when, when teachers relate to students. Is it possible that yoga could help teachers understand how, through their relationships with students, they can change the system? It's a very subtle question. It's a very interesting question as well. I mean, we, yeah, there is, like, the institution. To some extent it does exist. I mean, there is a... I, I would say there's a deliberate attempt to impose a particular worldview on people through the present education, like, for example, the accent on evolution, materialism, and so on, material science, to ge deliberately to give a me mechanistic worldview. But teachers, I mean, to some extent, I suppose, they're always at liberty to put in their own points of view, and it depends on... I mean, what you're talking to me is, is quite a novel idea. I don't know to what degree teachers are given freedom to express their own kind of points of view, their own way of thinking, their own way of relating within their classroom situation. If they're, you know, managers or supervisors or whatever they get called in the, in the institution or the system can stand off a bit and allow some, I mean, free enterprise, that's great. I don't know to what extent that's, that's practical. It's the only way forward, really. Mm. Either either within, you know, like the state system, there is some freedom so that groups of teachers can begin to work on a new paradigm. Or what you'll get is that those who actually have initiative, really reflective people, they'll simply go off and they'll establish a new paradigm in some independent you know, situation. They'll do it themselves. One way or another, you can't stop it. You can't stop new paradigms. It's not possible. And the best thing is to make it, you know, make, make the system paradigm, new paradigm friendly. The difficulty, I guess, about that is that the people in charge of schools tend to be old school, I suppose. I don't know. You can tell me whether, to what extent that's well, true. I'm sure many are, yes. Yeah, so they would be suspicious of new ideas. Mm. And that's the, so then you've got the teacher in like double stress, because on the one hand you've got the stress from the classroom, on the other hand, if, they, if the teacher has new ideas, then there's stress from the managers. That's, I mean, it's very, it's like, it's like an orange pick, you know, squeezed between two fingers. Mm. And then off it goes. <laughs> off it goes, yeah. Yes. So, but it, the thing is that the educational institution, I mean, it, it needs to look at the writing on the wall. If the old mechanistic process isn't working, and any number of teachers can tell them that it's not working, then they have to look at cutting edge research. You can't just patch, you know, you can't just paper over the cracks. We need a new worldview that really works. One of the big problems has been um, like fear of religion. In the States, you know, there's a, a, a big movement against mechanistic science in the schools. Evolution, particularly, they're aiming at evolution. And that's, to a large extent, it's coming from Christians and now also from Muslims. But the, the institution is fighting that because they're afraid of just admitting religion into the schools. Now, yoga is a very good alternative because yoga is not a religion. 